Good afternoon. I'm here at Sea Airspace, day two. I'm Carter Johnston, one of the DC-based contributors for Neighbor News. I'm here at Andrew's booth where they're showcasing several new products that they're offering to the Navy. And with me is uh, Shane Arnott, Senior Vice President, Programs and Engineering, Maritime Division. So what we're trying to achieve here is kind of new tools for the new rules, if you will, for maritime sea power. So everything from the, the uh, autonomous submarines that we have, so we've got the large displacement vehicle, uh, kind of behind me is the extra large, the big ominous uh, cube thing in the background, but then uh, two brand new products that we've brought to market uh, this, this show. So the Seabed Century, uh, which I'll come back to, and then the Copperhead family of fast AUVs. Uh, that have flexible payloads that have a munitions variant uh, or otherwise known as a torpedo, so yeah. Fantastic. And you, I mean, there's a ton of new additions here, like you mentioned, these two new products. So the Seabed Sentry and the Copperhead, they're both new to the show. Um, if you could give a description of kind of how they would be used together. So let's start with the Seabed Sentry. So Seabed Sentry is a fixed bottom node. So this particular uh, piece of kit has an anchor that you can see. So it gets placed on the sea floor by the Dive XL. So we can fit a dozen of these within a Dive XL, place them anywhere on the planet that there's water, uh, which is a good idea when you're using it as a surveillance system. So for the bad guys not to know where the security cameras are, so to speak. So current uh, subsea surveillance systems are cable systems. So they're laid by big cable laying ships, which you can see from space. So that's not very good to have a clandestine uh, or un you know, the threat to not be aware of where those security cameras are. So this particular capability can be placed by the XL anywhere. What we're showing here is the head is where the communication systems are. So we can place a number of these and they all network together or team together. And then uh, the green bit that you can see with the Perspex, which, you know, in the real ones, obviously not Perspex, but to show off uh, the flexible payload bay. So this is an exclusive partnership we have with Ultra Maritime, who make this array. So this array that looks like a DNA helix actually extends out to hundreds of metres and then retracts back in as well. So very similar technology to what's on the space station with some of their antennas, etc. cetera. Uh, but we put little uh, listening devices, if you will, onto this, uh, have a number of them uh, in a choke point or whatever, and we can hear both the, uh, uh, the mammals that might be swimming around, but also any man-made objects that, uh, you know, may or may not uh, or should or should not be there in order to protect both uh, choke points um, but also to protect critical infrastructure which you know vast majorities of critical infrastructure are below the waves uh, for instance you know this podcast uh, will be probably broadcast over subsea cables that actually carry 95 percent of the internet traffic that are all basically unsecured at this stage. So this is some technology to help secure all those uh, critical infrastructure and those resources, if you will. And you know, you mentioned some of the some of the submarines that you have, some of the unmanned submarines, and all of these other capabilities that kind of are in your ecosystem, Andrew's ecosystem. What kind of testing does that look like right now? Um, what 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 testing regime are you in? Uh, is the Navy interested? And what are you working towards moving forward? Every single thing that you see here is in water at the moment. So we have customers for the, the Dive LD. We just went public with a number of uh, deliverables that we've given to the US Navy for that particular system. The, uh, the Dive XL, uh, there is a military variant of that called the Ghost Shark for the Royal Australian Navy. So we have a number of vessels that are at sea. That particular program we delivered 12 months ahead of schedule, uh, which is kind of unheard of, which is quite nice just through our iteration approach. So very similar for these, these new products, if you will. Uh, we have an idea, we're venture backed. We do the investment to get started. We don't wait for a customer. We get it in the water, we learn, we iterate, and then as we get more customers, we'll you know, potentially pivot towards what their needs are. But for these two particular systems, we can't say publicly kind of who we're working with at this stage. The whole idea is all of these piece parts work together. So each of these effectors or sensors all can be delivered by the Dive XL. Dive XL can team with the Dive LD, and you can just come at problems differently by uh, bringing that ecosystem together, as you say, but also working with non android products as well. So our backbone is uh, some technology called Lattice, 
Lattice is the brain or the operating system, if you will, for all of these different products. And that enables us to work together, if you will, uh, get that teaming approach. It's uh, very much, I like the, the terminology ecosystem, but that it gives freedom or creativity back to the warfighter to address these problems. That's perfect. Thank you so much for taking your time out of, you know, one of the busiest booths that I've seen here at uh, C Airspace. I appreciate it and uh, looking forward to seeing where all these uh, new technologies progress, so thank you very much.